Greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. God's love is all-encompassing. If you hook up with Jesus Christ, you will win. Your life will turn around. He's a God of 360. He never fails. He's the God of love, and love never fails. Hello, thanks for tuning in today. The title of my message is, It's All in the Say. It's All in the Say. Let's turn to the text of Matthew 16, 13 through 19. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you're John the Baptist, some say Elias, others Jeremiah, or, the, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed thou art, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto these the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou loose shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus stated, Who do men say that I am? Jesus first started out by asking, basically, who do other people say that I am? Who does your family, your, your co-workers, your whole social network say who Jesus is? Do they even mention his name? Do they have a relationship with him? What is their perception of him? Most of the people of Jesus' day didn't get it. They missed him. They missed the visitation. Uh, they did, really didn't understand who he was. Jesus was a mystery to them and really to many people today. We'll look at 1 Timothy 3.16 and the Bible says, and without controversy, Great is the mystery of godliness. That word mystery means secret. So great is the secret of godliness. Great is the secret of who God is. It says here, and explains the secret. It says, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached on to the Gentiles, believe on the world, received up into glory. They're speaking of God here, and all those things are Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2.14 it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You have to have the Spirit of God to understand, understand spiritual principles or spiritual things. To a lot of people, this is Scripture. Preaching is foolishness. 1 John 4 and 4, the Bible says, Ye are of, You have God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. If you don't have his spirit, you speak of this world, because really, basically, how can anyone know any different unless you have his spirit? But there are those that seek for a better country whose builder and maker is God. Let's see what Jesus had to say about the kingdom of God. John 3, 1 through 7, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews that came to Jesus by night and saith unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. Jesus answered and say unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you're not born again, you can't see it. Flat out, you can't see it. Nicodemus saith unto him, Well, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit of baptism and infilling of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He can't even enter into the kingdom of God. That's what he's saying. But that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. There is a fleshly realm, the world, or what is called the kingdom of men. And then there's a spiritual realm called heaven, called the kingdom of God. There is a difference. One has a spirit of the world, and one has a spirit of, of God. You need the spirit of God to see or enter into the kingdom of God. You can't see it, you can't enter it. The earth used to be the devil's domain, and Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning unto the earth. But God gave the domain of the earth to Adam. He, you know, he told him, he said, take dominion of the, you know, of the seas, take dominion, of, take dominion of everything. 
But we know when Adam fell, something changed. But I want to show you what the enemy did with Jesus. Matthew 4, 8 and 9. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, a high pinnacle, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The devil is such a liar. First of all, they were in his to give. But this is a pitch that he made to Jesus. This is a pitch he makes to a lot of people. I'll give you everything. Well, it's not his to give. I'll give you riches. I'll give you this. If you just, you know, act like me, act like the devil. John 18, 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Basically what he's saying, my kingdom's something of another world. It's not of this world. What is a kingdom? Kingdom comes from the word king and then the Latin word dom, which is domain, uh, it domain or dominion. And basically, it's a king's territory. The territory our country is subject to a king. Let's look at Colossians 1.16. Speaking of Jesus, says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, calls Jesus the creator, by the way, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. For he is before all things. You couldn't be God unless you're before all things. And by him all things consist. You couldn't be God unless all things consist by you either. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Only God has preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. We're talking about Jesus here. John 18 and 37, the Bible says, this was Pilate and Jesus talking one to another. Pilate said unto Jesus, he asked him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, he said, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Jesus does have a kingdom. Jesus actually was the rightful king, the rightful heir when he was speaking. He come from the lineage of the Messiah of David. If you look at, at why this all happened, there was a king coming down through the lineage that was dethroned. And you had other people in there taking over the dominion of Israel that shouldn't have been. But Jesus actually was DNA, the rightful heir. He is a promise line. He is a promise of the, uh, the he is in the bloodline of the promised redeemer, redeemer. But here's more descriptions of kingdom. The inhabitants or population subject to a king. The government or universal dominion of God. A dominion is a territory under rule. Dominion comes from the word dominate. Dominion means power to direct, control, use, and dispose of at your pleasure, right of possession and use without being accountable. God doesn't have to be accountable to anybody. He's God. But the Holy Spirit is the earnest of our inheritance of the kingdom of God. When Adam sinned, he lost the dominion in the spirit realm of the earth. He lost it. It's also, a kingdom is also a, pri a, pri a princely nation or a state. 2 Peter 2 and 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus Christ does have a kingdom, and he reigns and he rules. Daniel 4 and 19 tells us, This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. Here's the devil telling Jesus, hey, look it, I'll give it all to you. He's trying to play, he was trying to play God. To who? God. The Bible tells me that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. He'll give it to whoever he will. Which is the world, by the way? The kingdom of men is the world. The Bible says that God's kingdom is everlasting. 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's a kingdom of power. Luke 17, 20 through 21, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, they wanted to know, when's the kingdom of God going to come? And he answered them and said, I like this, he said, The kingdom of God cometh not by observation. Neither shall they say, Lo, it's there, or lo, it's here. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. 
The kingdom of God is not through observation. It's not, you can't put it right down on your finger. It's right exactly here. You know, it's an invisible kingdom and it's manifested through someone that has the Holy Spirit or what's called the Holy Ghost. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, like the apostles did on the day of Pentecost, this is a sign that God has just moved into your being. He has just taken up residence in your soul. But remember, you have to yield to God to receive the Holy Spirit. You have to yield to Him. You have to yield your tongue to receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's the moment that He comes and fills you and He takes dominion of your life. You know, God is not interested in uh, the cattle on a, on a thousand hills. He's interested in you, my friend. He's interested in your welfare. He's interested in your life. He's interested in, in having a relationship with you. He really is. Will you allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life? I'm asking you today. Really think on that. What God is interested in, you are the real estate that he is interested in. Will you give him dominion? I asked you today. The Bible says in Mark 16, 16 through 17, says, these signs shall follow them that believe. It says, they shall cast out devils in my name. They shall speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. But why the tongue? You ever think of that? Why would God choose on the day of Pentecost? Why would he choose the tongue as a sign that you have received the Holy Spirit? It's an undeniable sign. Once you get it, nobody can say, well, you didn't get it. Well, you say, well, it's funny. Every day when I pray, I speak in tongues. Well, that's of the devil. Oh, really? I got it. Worshiping God. Hello. James 3, 2 through 4, the Bible says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Talking about why the tongue. And able also to bridle the whole body. If you're perfect with your language, you can bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. We turn it all about. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, Yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Okay? Same deal with the tongue. When God got your tongue, or when he gets your tongue, when you receive the Spirit of God and speak in other tongues, he has control of you. That is a sign that he's resident in you and taking dominion of you. And I want to tell you today, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's something you need to seek. Seek God. Tell the Lord, I want the Holy Spirit, like they got on the day of Pentecost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. You see, because there is the power of life or death in the power of the tongue. So what is the kingdom of God? The Bible says the kingdom of God is joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. That is the description uh, of the Holy Spirit. It's so much joy that the human vessel can't contain it. I don't know about you, but I'd like joy, peace, and righteousness in my being. And we can get it by having the Spirit of God. God lives in a, a faith dimension. He calls things that are not as though they were. And you know, we have that wonderful ability as well. He was God in the flesh, is what he was. Uh, the great God uh, 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 from heaven a spirit manifests himself in the form of a man that he called his son. The all son means is the flesh of God. And if you look at John 1 and 1, John 14, you will see what I'm telling you is the truth. You know, and then this, uh, Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said, but who do you say that I am? I'm asking you today, who do you say that Jesus is? Who is he in your life? I'm asking you, is he just... Is he just this God, this God that's somewhere, that's impersonal? Or is really, is he a personal savior to you today? Do you know him? That's the most important thing. Do you have a relationship with him? That is the, the biggest check in our spirit. Do I have a relationship with him? Because that's what he wants. Is he just a social figure to you? Is he just part of your lifestyle? Is he just a problem solver to you when you go and you have problems? Is he just someone you look for for comfort? But who is he to you? Who is he really to you? Peter gave the right answer when he said, You are Christ, the Son of the living God, the Christ of God. We know in John 1 and 1, the Bible says, The beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the important thing. John 1, 14, 
And the word was made flesh. Now, I just got through saying that the word was God and said God was made flesh. And dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You ever hear the term doubting Thomas? Well, I'm going to show you where it come from. John 20, 24 through 29. The apostle Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. This was after, you know, uh, he descended and he come back. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand in his side, I won't believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, he stood in the midst, and he said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be faithless, be faith, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. It doesn't get any more clear cut than my Lord and my God. Do you know there's syn synonymous terms? Uh, Psalms 100. Know you not that the Lord, he is God. When you say Lord, you say God. When you say God, you say Lord. And Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast not seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Are you a believer today? You've not seen him, but do you believe today? God dwells in a kingdom that takes faith. John 10 and 30, what did Jesus say? He said, I and my Father are one. No difference. Philip said to him, Lord, if you show us the Father, it'll satisfy us. And Jesus said, how long have I been with you? And still you do not know. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Philip. So why do you keep saying, show us the Father? You're looking at him. That's basically what Jesus said to him. And then we know in Acts 2.38, the Bible says to repent and be baptized. This is what Peter told him on the day of Pentecost when the people asked him, how can I be saved? He said, repent. If here's the formula, here's the recipe, repent. That means turn away from your sins. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Have a change of mind that I don't want to do those things I used to do. It says, and then be baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fully immersed as an adult. By the way, no children were ever baptized in the Bible, only adults. It said, and then he said, and receive, he said, be baptized for the remission of sins. He said, and receive ye the Holy Ghost. And it says that day that 3,000 people were added to the church. They hearkened unto his word. The Bible says the name of Jesus. And by the way, if you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, if you want to receive that Holy Spirit, you look at my number on the screen at 563-599-2980. I will baptize you in Jesus' name if you don't have the way to be baptized in Jesus' name. It's the only way that anyone was baptized in the scriptures. And if you want to obey them and do the apostolic way, the way the apostles did it, the keys were handed to them, that is the one baptism Ephesians 4 and 5 talks about. Let's look at the name of Jesus. It says it's the highest name that is named above the earth, below the earth, and beyond the earth. What name are you healed in? Name of Jesus. What name are you delivered in? The name of Jesus. The Bible says they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Colossians 3 and 17, the scriptures say, this is how important that name of Jesus is. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. It is the most powerful name in this world and in the worlds to come. You see, the name of Jesus actually means God has become my salvation. Now, a lot of people get wrapped up in the name of Jehovah. That was actually back in the translators. There were three letters uh, because the name of God was so sacred they wouldn't write it. So the translators come in and filled it in and turned it into the name, this name Jehovah. But my Bible tells me that neither, in Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other name. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's why you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. But why is it so important 
that name because it is a saving name of God. When, if you look at a dollar bill and if you look at the uh, superscription on it, what is on it? That paper doesn't make the American dollar valuable. Uh-uh. It's the superscription on it, okay? Because it, it's what's on it, okay? When I get baptized in Jesus' name, I now have a superscription upon my heart. Something that all the angels in heaven can see is the name of Jesus. You see, if I write a check, what's the most important part of that check? It's the name. Because that name gives the, gives the authority, the power, that that money is good in the bank. And it's the same way. We need the name of Jesus applied to our life. All of heaven recognizes, I can tell you. Matthew 7 and 29. Now we're actually going to see where Jesus actually was in action with his authority. The Bible says, For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Why? Because the word authority means legal power, right, to act. It's the Greek word exousia, power, right, strength, privilege, exercising power or command. He had every right. He's a king of heaven. Luke 4, 31 through 37. Here's another example. And came down to Capernaum, Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with, what, power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had the spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have, you, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Are you, did you come to destroy us? I know you, that you, who you are. You're the Holy One of God. The devils recognize the name of Jesus. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went about every place of the country round about. Look at Hebrews 1 and 8 says, But unto the Son he saith, now he's talking to the Son, Jesus, Thy throne, O God, it called him God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. When Jesus told the disciples how to pray, what did he say? In Matthew 6 and 10, he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He told Peter, on, he told Peter in, that, in my text, he said, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And what exactly does that mean? The word bind is a Greek word, de dominion. What it means is to dethrone, okay? It virtually means to dethrone. So we have the right, or the say to, to speak something into existence, to bind the devil in every area of our life because we're made in the image of God. And Adam lost his dominion, but Jesus got it back at Calvary. Revelations 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. The reason he could give the keys to Peter is he went down to hell after he died and he got the keys. He went down to the depths of hell and he told the devil, I want the keys, give me the keys, the keys, and he had to give them. Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, it says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but he that also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven, all heavens, that he might fill all things. You know, he got the keys, and he gave the keys to Peter. We have the keys. And he says, whatever you loosed. So whatever you loose is you pronounce to be true. It's, it's also you, you, you unbind it. So when that happened, when, that, when we bind and we loose, it's because we're in agreement with heaven. Heaven and earth is connected. One of these days, God's kingdom is going to come down to this earth on the new earth. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, For verily I say unto you, whatever you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and won't doubt in your heart, and shall believe those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. What say you today? If you have a mountain in your life, you can't get around it, you can't get it over, it's too big, it's overwhelming, speak to that mountain and say, mountain, I bind you, I rebuke it, whatever that thing is, I bind you in Jesus' name, and then loose something that's wonderful or combats that in the name of Jesus. Okay, there are a lot of whatsoevers in our lives. That Greek word loose means to determine or pronounce not to be bound. So we're coming in agreement with heaven. So our, this, this kingdom is operated by faith, you see. For instance, I can show you how to bind. Look at I bind my mind to the mind of Christ and I loose every thought that's contrary to the word of God in Jesus' name. I can say that throughout the day. I say it in my prayer. It works. 
I bind my son or daughter to the perfect will of Jesus Christ, and I loose everything that would try to stop it. I bind my health to the perfect health of Jesus Christ, and I loose cancer. I loose poor health in Jesus' name. You see, God's going to burn this world with a fervent heat and create a new earth. And Revelation 11, 15 tells us, look at here, And the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Remember, it's an everlasting kingdom, right? But the kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdoms of God. Those who have been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, those who are seeking and serving God, will rule as kings and priests on the new earth. We will help Jesus reign and rule on the, on the new earth. We'll actually help him around the throne, actually judge the world. That's what the Bible says. That's what's the rightful privilege. But many people don't take a hold of this great and wonderful authority and call things into being, into life, that are not as though they were. How many people, when you have, uh, you're oppressed, you know, ever rebuke it in your prayer closet or rebuke that thing or oppression or depression? You know, the authority in the name of Jesus is incredible. The power, the latent power that's within you, if you have, the, if you have received the Holy Spirit, you can say, mountain be thou removed. My bad trial, be thou removed. Somebody just driving you crazy, be thou removed in Jesus' name. What do you want to come to pass in your life? I'm asking you today, say it, speak it, believe it, because of his authority in your life. What say you? What do you say? What are you speaking? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? I encourage you today that to do, as Peter said in Acts 2.38, to repent, turn away from what you're doing, be baptized and be fully immersed in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. And receive ye the Holy Ghost, which gives you the power to live the life. doesn't say that Christians are perfect, okay? What it says is that he will give you power to overcome anything. Why? Because he's God. I encourage you, you know, to look at the bottom of the screen, 563-599-2980. If you want the Holy Spirit, the way they got it in the Bible, if you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, call me. I'm glad to accompany you and baptize you in Jesus' name and to pray with you that you receive it in Jesus' name. <music>